Паша, я Glad to be here. I'm going to tell you a story. The story how we delegated chaos engineering to product teams. So why we decided to try chaos engineering, how we adopted it, and yeah, how we delegated it. About me. So it's me, Alexander. I'm in IT for more than 10 years, mostly in software engineering role. Um, currently, I'm a tech lead and the chaos in the list. Uh, in reliability field. So some context about our system. We have more than a thousand of microservices. A lot of product teams commit to them, develop them, and somehow maintain them. We work in delivery domain. Uh, a lot of businesses there, so it's not just one business, a lot of product teams, as I said, a lot of businesses use the same system. Before we start, I have a question for you. Please raise your hand if you know what case engineering is. Uh -huh. Now, please raise if you don't. <laughs> wow, okay, a lot of people doesn't know. So case engineering is a way to inject faults into your system so you can test how resilient it is and how it's, how it's reliable. What does it mean? It means that how your system after heals and how it fault proof, basically. So our path starts when we found out that we have a lot of incidents and few of them was major ones, meaning that we can't provide services to our users. Just, you can imagine, few hours uh, business stopped. We can't do, do any functions. So, and we had the hypothesis here that we can diagnose them on the early stage with chaos. Um, knowing our incident history, we decided to do non-canonical -canon chaos engineering, but on application level, meaning that we know that, okay, we have some problems, we have some problems in our services, maybe it's somehow misconfigured or has some bugs in it, so we need to focus on application. Uh, we decided that we need to try to test fallbacks, to test timeouts, and uh, find some non-critical requests and find the critical ones, and test queues capacities. It was our focus at that time. Uh, before start doing something, we decided to do some research. Uh, Chaos Engineering and Netflix, it's a most canonical book and uh, a lot of articles there. It, you can say it's Bible. Uh, we take a look what huge platforms offers as a case as a service tools. It's AWS, uh, fault injection simulation, I believe, and Azure Case Studio. I can be wrong with names, but it's something like that. And we found a lot of open source tools. It's a uh, case monkey from Netflix. It is a uh, chaos mesh for Kubernetes. It's a uh, fault injection in Envoy. And uh, we decided to do a technical solution. So it's time to choose what we want to do. And our choice was write our own plugin for Jinx and Lua. Why? Well, we have a lot of in-house tools, infrastructure, etc. We just can't afford ourselves um, to spend a lot of time and the resources to adopt open source tools uh, because they rely on something other infrastructure. We set up custom reliability requirements which are not presented in uh, open source tools. And the Lua plugin is just 100 lines of code. It's relatively easy to write. And also it's fine. Every developer dreams to write something on their own. <laughs> in Lua, right. <laughs> okay, so another uh, finding from our research is prerequisites. What you need to do before you're trying to adopt uh, case engineering. Basically, you need to understand what's your business core. What do I mean by that? You need to know what's your business core functionality. For example, in e-market, uh, business core can be then user goes to your site, select some goods, place them into a basket, and that's all. That's business core functionality. In another example, in another e-market, it can be then user select some goods, put them into a bucket, and pays. Uh, that differs, and that's 
how business think that it's critical. Or another example, when you doing some streaming platform, uh, in that case, business score can be then user starts play, uh, video download, vid user can see the video, maybe without subtitles, maybe without audio, audio, maybe in poor quality, but it will be business score. So another important thing, it, thing is good observability. Not perfect, but good. You need to be able to answer, are we okay now? So you need to see technical metrics and business metrics, maybe in one place. And nice to have is then services have tiers. Uh, services should has some markup relying to how important it to business. For example, if it's tier A service, it means that without this service, a business can't function at all. If it is tier B service, so we can live without it for some time, it, we, can, we lost something, but it's okay. We the business will function and so on. Tier C is not so important. Tier D is absolutely not important, and it can uh, continue forever. So uh, we found how we want to do technical solution. We found prerequisites, and we already set them up. So how to chaos exactly? We decided to break it down to four questions. How, what, where, and when. How was really straightforward. We know what we, we know we exposed. So we decided to test uh, faults in HTTP connections. Basically, we decided to inject 429 to test rate limit errors. We inject 500 error. It's when, like, general error in service. We decided to try latency if uh, service takes too long to proceed the request. And for how long? We took one and a half from core business process time, I described it earlier, to just be able to take full user life in this, in this process. So what? Uh, where we want to enable chaos, chaos at which services? First guess was to case on random services. But it's actually not so good. As I said, we have more than thousand of services and it, how it looks, the connections between them. It's beautiful, but completely unusable, actually. Uh, if we inject faults into some points in this uh, service and we find something that, okay, we have downtime, what we can learn from it, what we can extract from this data. So another guess was to chaos tier A services. Sounds good, but actually not. Because <laughs> we already know that, okay, it's tier A service. We can't function without it. What? So what, what we will learn from it? Nothing, actually. Uh, so another guess is to chaos tier A dependencies. And it's actually a good one. So what do I mean by dependency? Then service X make request to service Y, and service Y make request to service Z, means that uh, Y and Z are dependencies for service X. So, but how deep we should uh, see for the dependencies? That's a question which led us to case only direct dependency. And it, actually, this one is brilliant, 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 <laughs> sorry. So it's very good because we, we don't care about um, how deep fault. We want to isolate fault only for tier A service. We don't care, is it really deep or it's just tier B somehow wrongly operates. We just want that that doesn't affect our business much. So where, production or testing? Please raise your hand if you think that we need to do drills on production. All right. Eventually. Yeah, and for testing, okay, I spoke. And for testing, please raise your hands. Vitaly, you raised twice for production. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we choose production. Why? Because our test and production environment are not synced. So if we find something in testing environment, that doesn't mean that it uh, will be in production. 
chaos in our eyes is a main incident, meaning that we have everyone alerted, everyone knows what's going on, and we can revert it quickly. And risk worse, if we find something for downtime for five minutes, which can prevent longer incident for like one hour, it's really worse. So when? Day drills or night drills? It's an awful binary question. <laughs> for example, this how looks a uh, business rhythm. This is day and this is night. It's actually quite logical because at night no one uses something. They all sleep. So what do you think? Should we uh, do drills at day with the right hand? Right. And uh, at night? All right, almost half. So we decided to do drills at night. We were scared that we can just do a big downtime and we tried to reduce the amount of losses. Spoiler, spoiler it was a bad decision. Uh, so first drills, we decided to do them at night for 300 services, it's direct dependencies for TRA services. We split them into batches to reduce possible downtime that some, somehow just everything. Uh, fair notice, we did not only one first drill, it was like uh, three or five of them during three months and we looking for answers for previous one, for previous questions during these drills. So first drills give us next results. It took one human week to, anal to analyze the result. We dug really deep. We looked at logs, we looked at traces, we looked at metrics, we even tried to look at source code of these services. And you can example that our team doesn't know about them, just 300 of them, and everyone is written in their style, we just don't know about everything. <coughs> so we got some accident night calls, because we tried to notify everyone, but we, not, but we didn't. So they got calls by alerts. We made some on personal calls because we got, um, sorry, because we got a uh, system actually to downtime and we need to call people who maintain that services so they can help us. Uh, we found a lot of action items, so we was actually succeed in this. And we found a new tier A service, meaning that uh, we thought that exactly this service was tier C, but in fact it was tier A. Uh, so we found something new and it was a good one. So what we learned, we decided that we need to delegate analysis to product teams. We don't want to spend time uh, trying to understand their logic, their logs, their metrics, and uh, we ask product teams to take care about this. Also product teams take care of action items. It sounds obvious, but we tried to fix them on our own and it took a lot of time. <coughs> and drills should be made in working hours, meaning that everyone stay alerted, everyone know what's going on, everyone close to their working station, because if we do it at night and the uh, engineer is sleeping, it will take some time for them to wake up, to maybe drink coffee, maybe understand what's going on, understand why I was alerted, why I'm so unlucky. Uh, uh, take some time with the rage <laughs> from night call. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, just a really, really important one. Deals should be made in working hours. Chaos is a great tool for proving service theory. I explained that we found a new TRA service and uh, now we use it to, for proving service to, it's uh, just a fact. We can get the fact that uh, this service actually can impact on business or not. And the chaos is uh, good for gaining knowledge. What I mean by that? There are famous um, methodology for representing knowledge awareness. I adopted it for our case. Actually, you can be aware about some knowledge and you know it or don't. So, um, in first square, you are aware about some incident and you know how to fix that. It's basically homework done. It's well-known incidents, you know how to fix them, you already have, have tools and runbooks. In second 
square this one. You aware about some incident, but you don't know yet how to fix them. Basically, it's incidents which require analysis. In third square, uh, you are unaware about some incidents, but you already know how to mitigate them. It's about uh, mitigation tools and run books and uh, just instructions for emergency situation. And fourth square is terra incognita, is a place for all scary nightmare things which can happen during the next business lifetime. So normally chaos lives in these squares, second, third, and fourth, but fourth one is the chaos really shines. <coughs> so if business wants new feature, uh, basically it's change for a system. If developer run releases too often, it's changes for a system. If architect decided to adopt some new fancy feature, it's again, it's a system change. And uh, for reliability, you want to know how you will proceed with these, these changes. You can just stop, you need somehow leave, adapt, and, and uh, know, can I leave with that, or it will lead to some incidents in future. So KS can extract this knowledge and move to all other um, squares. So, and yeah, we faced with another problem. We have 1,000 of microservices. We had a lot of product teams who developed them. We have a really small amount of site reliability engineers. We have high rate of system change, namely like a lot of uh, releases per day. <coughs> and we found that this native team can unleash the chaos power and uh, <laughs> we just can't keep the pace of system change. So how we can solve that? Um, one of approaches is to increase team size, but we have a, a lot of microservices. It doesn't work to hire a lot of people so can, everyone can be reliable for, for, for microservices, I don't know. Another approach is to uh, optimize that, but we are not technically mature enough to do optimization on this one. Uh, so solution is delegate case drills to product teams. We just give them additional load. You build it, you run it, uh, all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, so we decided to do chaos as a product uh, and how we can do that? Uh, well, we want to be transparent and uh, public and uh, engineers friendly for that. So we do a lot of talks, we do some publicity, we really try to improve our visibility. Uh, and the drills should be really easy to, to repeat, to start on their own. Like newcomer just can do two clicks and uh, okay, drills are set. So for publicity, we did a lot of talks, discussions, internal presentations. We write our digest and blog. We, during random coffee with some guys from, uh, from other teams, we say, you know, I do really cool stuff. I inject uh, falls into production and we, right <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 I break production on purpose. <laughs> so do you want to hear more about that? Yeah. So for Digest, we write about drills with peace, peace. So uh, a lot of achievements, what we found, how we fucked up, uh, something new, something uh, what can touch human's heart. Basically, we just spread the case for two teams. We write about our plans, what we are going to do, like in Horizon for one month, for three months not for one year because we are not much enough. We write about changes, we are relatively new, so we do a lot of interface changes, so we want for people to be, ab to be aware about that. Uh, we write about achievements, like we found new TRA service, well, that's great. We proved that that service is not TRA, so that's also great. We respect self-conducted drills, then team start drills on their own, we just, okay, guys, you are cool, we really respect you, here's a public note about you, please do that more often. 
So, and digests should be regular. We try to post them at least one month, once per month. So, docs, docs should be human friendly. It should be written for humans, not for engineers. <laughs> <laughs> that should be easy to read. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, easy to update, and sh it should be as simple as the KS manual. For example, here how looks our docs. Uh, literally, here just two or three clicks to get to a scenario which, which team probably wants to test. For example, service returns 500. One click, undercut, and has instruction how to run it. Service takes a long time to process the request and returns 500. Again, one click, and uh, it's ready to go. So visibility, we trying to be visible. We push anything about our drills, about started drills, about scheduled drills to our every observability tool, to Grafana, to annotations, to event logs. We set uh, alerts about that. We set notifications about that into chats, into every, everywhere. Uh, what we write there, who started the drills? It's one of most important stuff. So we want to know person who started so we can ask why you have done that, why, why, why? Uh, which services under drills and uh, how long it will take. So, and also we save artifacts in trackers. So when time comes and uh, you decide to see what was in, what was like one year ago, you can just take a look and say, okay, I can repeat it. And here's step by step what happened during the drills. Um, SLO, service level objectives. Some people are stubborn and some people are afraid. And uh, let's be clear, clear that product teams has other priorities. They need to develop features, they need to fix bugs, they don't care about reliability. So for that purpose, we decided to write objectives that, okay, we advise you to do drills. It can help in our reliability. It can help in your next review. So please do that. And uh, what we have right there. Why you want to start the drill? For example, if you are tier A service and you feel like you are not anymore, you need to start the drill to prove that. Uh, if you tier B service, you need to run it regularly on, on basis. So how often? you need to run it, why and who responsible for that. So we just uh, described the rules for game. And uh, we brought our case as a service tool. So basically it allows authorization because a lot of microservices, we don't want to start some drills on human mistake. We want to have some security in this one. It's basically schedule or start drills. It saves artifacts in tracker. It does visibility and notifies service, business, PRs, maybe someone else who subscribed to that. And for now, it takes one hour to schedule and it, it includes getting approvals and why one day to analyze, to analyze results. So for results, for six months, we get like 30 more than 30 independent drills by teams, both in production and testing environment. Few unclosed action items found during these drills actually led to incidents in production. So if uh, teams were able to find time to close this action item, this incident can never be happened. Uh, in contrast, I don't have it on the slide, but for the same amount of time, we conducted like, I don't know, maybe 10 drills or something. So it's already, uh, we have more covered by teams. So we did this path and we plan to do these drills, not mandatory, but obligatory. So we want to move from ours SLO to SLA. So it will be agreement that services should done that on purpose and it will be required for them. So, and yeah, that's it. I engage you to... <laughs>
to, to ask questions and to try chaos engineering if you are afraid of incidents and uh, and maybe if uh, you already are overwhelmed with uh, incidents so yeah please go on try chaos engineering you can write me to linkedin ask some questions uh, and i'm more than happy to chat about uh, reliability case engineering and other stuff so That's 